Hello? Good evening, sir. What can I get for you? Ticket for Notre Shen. Okay, it's gonna be nine dollars, please. Nine dollars for two tickets? Oh, sorry, I thought you said one ticket. So how much? Uh, it's gonna be eighteen for two, sir. I thought it was seventeen fifty. <clears throat> nope, prices just went up last night, actually. I don't believe it. No? Because I'm not lying. So you probably should. That's outrageous. Okay. I should take my business elsewhere. That'll be fine, sir. If you, that's, you feel like it's a you don't moral even issue. Care. What? I know. Uh, there's nothing I can do about it because it's the, admi the admission price. So. Outrageous. Your prices went up a month ago. Um, actually, that was in the concession stand. Well, I'm not paying $18. That's outrageous. <laughs> okay, sir, do you need me to get a manager for you? What's he gonna do? No. All right. Uh, would you like me to sell you two tickets then to complete the transaction? My wife is parking the car. When she gets here, see what she thinks. Okay, now's the part where I get the manager. I can't find them right now, sir. What's your name, young man? Are you serious? What's your name, young sir, man? Sir, every day you come in here and you get mad at me about something and then you demand to know my name when you already know it. Smart Alex, I'm good. I wish you were older, sir.
show up late, you get a warning. Three warnings equal a write-up. More than two write-ups in a given consecutive six-month period, and you're fired. However, if the manager is 30 minutes late, you aren't compensated for the time you spent being responsible. I volunteered for the service out of respect for the old theater and love of movies. My name is Morrison. I'm 21 years old. High school graduate. Here I am. An usher at the High Point Cinema. I dream of better places, but for now this has to do. The guy that let us in is Jim Rivers. He's a corporate boy. We'll get to him in a minute. I'd been working here for nine months when corporate theaters bought the high point and inflicted its corporate sensibilities upon us. The loyal, tight-knit staff were so violated by Jim's treatment and the policy change that they all quit, leaving me as the sole guard of the old way. It's an easy job, but it takes a certain finesse to come in here every day and perform essentially meaningless duties, knowing no one will notice or care. Here are some of the important things I do around here. Only so much pride can be taken in a well-served soda. And why should you care anyway, when these people don't? Management. Selected for leadership. Here they are in action. Good morning, Fisher. Don't start. What's the matter? You look, uh... What, is there something wrong? They're in charge of fleshing out company policy, satisfying the customer, and tracking every cent in the building. Jim, stop. Nora. Take that water jug downstairs and show it to the bonehead. Thanks, Mar. You know, I had a bad night last night. You mind if I tell you about it later? For as long as you like. So you're showing the water jug or not? I'm on my way. Get that damn TV out of the alley. Looks tacky. Good morning, Morrison. You know, 30 years ago today, I was an usher, just like you. As a kid, I saw all the classics here. Kids like you don't know great cinema. <clears throat> Nobody cleaned the butter machine last night. So. You guys don't realize, these are legends on the walls. Let me show you something. This is our new ice water jug. You want to fill it up with ice, and put it over here on this counter. Now once you get it over here, you're going to want to get the pitcher, fill it up, and dump it in the top. But when you refill it, don't put more water in. Put more ice in. And the ice will melt into water. I'll show you. Watch me, Anthea. Oh, I think I can get it. Look at him go. I'll show you first.
We don't put the water in until we get it over there. That way, it's not too heavy. Just think, what would you all do if I wasn't here? This place would fall apart. I need you to get busy. You're not getting paid to talk. Noir is typical of most upper management. He's incompetent, but the company doesn't know how to get rid of him, and was a friend of the family who originally owned the theater. He's little more than a handyman with good intentions. When corporate theaters took over, they kept him on as a favor to the theater's original owners. His salary was cut and the corporation brought in Jim Rivers to make sure the transition went smoothly. He was a young corporate player who clearly knew how to impress the right people. The company's rising star, but really just another educated failure with a useless college degree. To give you an insightful tidbit on Jim, Jim is the one who scolded Adelaide for blowing the accident-free pizza party when she got burnt by a renegade colonel and they had to fill out the OSHA reports. Why is that over there? Over there, why is that? They can handle that? Policy here depends on the individual manager, their mood that day, and their disposition within the company. Ah, uh, sir. Deal with it yourself. Uh, I need to use the restroom. And... Permission to use the restroom, sir? Why don't you clean it while you're in there? Thank you, sir. Jim, I have to go to the bathroom, Shut too. up, Morrison. It's time to open again the box. To compensate for the lack of pay and respect, we take certain liberties. Adelaide lies about mopping every Sunday night and instead opts for a 20 minute nap in the auditorium. Martin pretends he doesn't know we have to clock out for our breaks and racks in an extra four hours per paycheck. Rick has never caught the smoker in the men's room, but tells Rivers that he'll keep a sharp eye out for him because fire code is important. Rick is a bastard. Fisher likes to refund ticket stubs she finds in the trash, which gives her an average 18 to 27 extra dollars per shift. Mark, well, are we going to open today? You can train people to do their jobs, but you can't train them to care. We're open 365 days a year, waiting for you and your money. Excuse me, ma'am. There's popcorn? It tastes like yesterday's popcorn. All right, well, uh, were you here yesterday? No, I wasn't. Well, then how would you know what yesterday's popcorn tasted like? Thank you, Jim. Check the letter, dude. Take her easy.
more right here. Yeah! Motherfucker. It's triple. And that's two points. Come on, come over here. Thanks, we can. Let's try a little bit of this, man. Puff on that in there. Where are the ushers? Gotcha! <laughs> uh, what are you writing here anyway? Poetry? Dear Oscar Wilde, would that I could time travel so I could tongue French you! <laughs> oh yeah, there once was a boy named Rick and he had a real tiny you know what. Also, I like sunsets and wrinkles! <laughs> Oh my god, what happened to your diary? Oh, with the trash can. It's not hard, and it went in the trash can. Jesus Christ, Martin Kent. <laughs> Yikes. That thing's trash. Fucking dick, guy. Uh, Whoops, cover thing. Oh, Dollar Tree. I was seeing if there was trash outside. Then why do you smell like smoke? Because I was smoking while I was doing it. You're not supposed to smoke on the job. We used to be able to. Where's Mark? Why are you wet? The men's bathroom is flooding. Go grab a mop and a wet floor sign and go mop it up. Don't let me catch you smoking again or you're fired. You better hope your little friends were out there fucking around. Were they? They're not my friends. The threat of firings is an everyday occurrence, but Actual firing is rarely happening. The incompetence in this building alone is pretty mesmerizing. Why am I the only one in here? Hey, can I go home now? Did you get the bathroom? Yes. What about the lobby? Instead of firing you, this company has a variety of ways of making you feel miserable. Like scheduling you alone on the worst shifts. Oh, you ever been fucked by a marine colonel before? No. Why'd you bring it up? We're scheduling you with the worst co-workers hoping that you'll quit. The company makes the job undesirable. Instead of taking control and firing someone, they pussyfoot around. Which I have no respect for at all. It's like the old boyfriend who wants to dump his girlfriend but doesn't have the guts to do it. Snow instead makes himself unpleasant, mean, and boring so the girl will leave him. And it never works. Although in itself no major disaster, a series of events directly linked to the bathroom incident magnified its significance. While the bathroom was pooling up, some water found its way through the floor and stained a few ceiling tiles in the lobby. This would be no big deal, except that buying the replacements bumped the petty cash over its monthly limit, which directly affects Jim's bonus. Somehow, we got blamed for the whole thing, and when Jim is in a bad mood, his management technique is to inflict it on the staff until we feel as shitty as him. 
I don't know, guys. I mean, I think I think we could have been a little more responsible. <laughs> uh, why don't you stick to the story there, Martin? They couldn't prove anything, but that didn't matter. I don't know about other people, but being talked down to and insulted is not a big motivator for me. Are we using a slushy machine? That's no slushy machine. <laughs> well, what is it? Bad news. The bad news was in fact a fiber optic surveillance system. Many thousands of dollars were spent. A security company also reviews the footage from an undisclosed location with a satellite feed and records any suspicious behavior. Would all available ushers please stop standing around? So not only were we being watched by Jim, some guy gets paid to monitor my boring work life. The cameras took all the sport out of it. Jim didn't even have to leave the office. They were also supposed to keep things like this from happening. I am so gonna tell on you, you asshole. Unless you give me half. Damn moralist. Jim justified the security cams by claiming that they keep honest people honest. Jerk. Once I got past my 90 days, he, you know, would have realized what an asset I am to this company. Such a prick. You know, there's quite a few ways I could tear him up and get away with it. Every time I turn around, he's just being a dick or fucking somebody else over. I'm gonna need to cut your hours again. No skin off my back, sir. See what I mean? Prick's fucking me over again. I remember it was a particularly bad morning, and it went something like this. Okay, hold, hold on a second. I gotta ask this guy a question. Do you know where the ladies' room is? Do you work here? So you're not only mute, you're stupid too. Sometime around noon, I found out the DM was coming to inspect the theater for the first time, so everything had to be perfect. I quickly learned that an accurate reflection of our working environment was not anything the DM needed to see. Mark would not be scheduled that day. Only this is the DM here, one week early. I, of course, don't know this yet. Excuse me, ma'am, do you have a ticket? Do you have a ticket? Probably not the best way to meet your boss's boss. Up until this point, nothing too rotten had happened, though. However, this guy really came through for me. Yeah, you work here? Hey, guy. For some reason, it was acceptable for the managers to go on a two-hour lunch break with the DM, leaving us to fend for ourselves. 
We could always ring Fisher's cell phone if there was a problem. And there was the head. It was like we were made for each other or something. And so I picked it up and I said, I'll take care of you. What are you doing? Do you work here? Yes. How right. did you make this mess? Well, I need my money back. That movie's terrible. Yeah, well, sir, I'm sorry we don't we don't refund for that. No, no, no. I'm, I'm a dissatisfied customer, and it's your job to serve me, and uh, you can get my money. It's so fine. you were in the theater for two hours. It doesn't make a difference. Look, okay, it's, it's company policy not to refund your money after a half an hour. Listen, listen, go get your manager, and then we'll see who's right, all right? <laughs> Look, unless it's a presentation problem with the movie, there's nothing we can do. It is a presentation problem with the film. The picture is very, very shaky. <clears throat> Look, we have a professional projectionist on hand. Here, allow me to make sure she's doing everything okay. Oh, it's not too much trouble. Sure enough, everything's fine. No, nope. no! Everything is not fine. You think... Uh, is it the handheld uh, cinematography? Is that what's got you guys all... I don't know your lingo. Listen, listen, listen. I'm very unhappy with how you're handling this situation here. Okay, look, do you have your stubs on you? Yes. Oh, they're in my nachos. No, we were we, we were in the theater. I was sitting next to a fat woman. Sir, no, you came here for a service. We provided you with the service. You hear? You said sir. I'll tell you about service, pal. I am a Gulf War veteran. I know what service is. Good men die. Some of them within a few miles of me, and you have a meaningless job because of that. Do you understand that you are neglecting that responsibility? I demand to see your superior. Well, she's not here today, sir. I don't care where he is. You find him and you... Oh, you know what? Actually, that explains why this place is such a shithole. Sir, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. <laughs> Listen, I know that this is your career and all, okay? This is pretty much your whole existence. That doesn't mean you can take it out on me. Pussy. All right, look, I'm going to call the cops and they're going to have you escorted out of here. You will not call the police. What was that? What was that? I'll tell you, you're gonna get more of it. Because I can. I, I, shit! No! 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 Ow! My chin! My chin! You'll do nothing to me. Don't you understand? You treat us wrong. You, you rob us in the door. You rob us in the concession stand. You think it's okay to not listen to my viable complaint? Oh. We'll get. You. We'll get you. We're going to take our business to your competitors. No more money here. Don't spend your money on these pricks, okay? We're taking it to your competitors. We'll show you. That's how we'll get you. Unhappy customer! Right here! Very unhappy customer! Very unhappy! I'm keeping the hat, too. Mark, you seem like a happy guy. <laughs> happy guy? I wouldn't go that far. Yeah, but you do whatever you want. I think I care about any of this. Well, no, but doesn't it bother you that like, the management doesn't have any idea how to run this place at all? 560 an hour, it doesn't. Sure, we're not even allowed to read books anymore. Yeah. Hey, have you seen that new projectionist? No, what's her name? Andrea?
Does she have? I don't know. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> Timing! Mark is the single worst employee I've ever met. Like some complimentary hand picked popcorn? Huh? Huh? Hey, you're real nice. I'll even sneeze on it for you. Uh, 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 a boom. Ew. Don't say ew to the nice man. Most people write Mark off as a pothead which he is, but there's more to him than anyone cool takes ball. the time to see. Yeah, I didn't finish it <laughs> I smoke entirely too much pot with this guy. Rebelling was the only way we could communicate that we were unhappy. We didn't want much, just a fair and rewarding workplace. Hey, uh, Puff Puff give you, huh? Was it too much to ask? What school do you go to? Uh, I don't. I don't go to school. I I graduated a few years ago. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh. Um. How old are you? Twenty-one. <laughs> um. What time do you get off work? Uh, pretty late, like midnight. Pretty late. Mm -hmm. Well, my curfew is eight, but my mom said tomorrow you can come over for dinner if you if you're, if you're not working. But, um. That sounds delicious. What's your name? Rachel. Hi, Rachel. Hi. I'm, I'm Morrison. Nice to meet you. Hi. Mm -hmm. Sure. I don't, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it for dinner. I'm sorry. Oh. Well, you sure? Because I think my mom's chicken making, like, chicken. Maybe you could, like, um, come by my school or something. I, I go to school just on the street. Uh, yeah, no, I don't know. You, you, it's just on the street. I mean, I, I get off at 3. I don't, I don't think I did. It's, it's just down there. Yeah, I don't know if that's even legal. I, I'm sorry. I I'm, I'm real cool. <laughs> uh, we, you that's, know? No, that's fine. Okay. Maybe could I have your number? Uh, just, just, you know, for later in, in case. I don't you think know. so, but I'll be up here if you want to come get okay. an application at some point. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I'll see you later then? All right. Okay. Bye, Rachel. It was nice meeting you. Nice meeting you, too. See ya. Bye. See ya. For a proper insight into my love life, that's the closest I've been to making out in about four months. How do you motivate people? The great enigma of the modern corporation. I look around me and see an almost non-existent work ethic among my co-workers. Neither Mark or Rick would ever clean a bathroom or sweep the floor, but they do contribute in their own special way. How do you maintain when your co-workers don't give a shit? I get paid the same as Rick does, and yet he's having sex in the parking lot. Look at him go. He's on the clock, she's 16, but it doesn't matter. They probably won't talk after this. I 
didn't start breaking in for personal screenings until after corporate theaters took over. Before, we used to have midnight screenings just for the employees. It was the best perk of the job. Corporate theaters revoked that right, citing an incident in another theater where alcohol was involved and the sexual commingling of staff members and management had occurred. I broke in alone for the first new movie that opened under new management. Now it's going on a year and a half and no one's noticed. Unsure of the future? Join corporate theater's management team? A new staff supervisor position is opening at the corporate theater's high point location? Do you have what it takes? Submit your qualifications to human resources care of Karen Warshanowski? Holy shit. I'm clearly the most qualified man for the job. Hmm. What does it mean that the one thing I live for is to escape? In most work environments, performance reviews are when the manager assesses your worth and fucks you with a five cent raise. The reviews are spit out from an electronic mouth in the break room here. A series of graphs chart your performance uh, on a scale peaking at ten. Anything below a three in your performance is investigated. This anonymous mechanical process provides you easy to read criticism without the fear of confrontation. If you disagree with your readout, then you can schedule a meeting with your district manager. Ah! Remember what we talked about, Morrison. Smile. Stand up straight. Give her the old Irish charm. All right, where is she? Downstairs, smoking. Jim's down there with her. What? God damn it, why? Don't worry. Get down there. To do this right, I decided to go into it with a positive attitude. I've heard they can help. Remember, Morrison, you're a shoe-in. I see what you're saying, though. I think it's a great idea. Oh, good. I'm glad you like that. 
sit. Okay, Morrison, you've drugged me out here. You've got five minutes. What do you want? Okay, well, uh, it's then it's this. Uh, I must have accidentally gotten Rick's review by mistake. Um, I understand these things happen. That's right. I don't know myself. But I'm, I'm better than that. In fact, the reason that I'm here is because I would like to be considered for the supervisor position. We encourage our employees to have a sense of humor. I'm way more qualified than anyone else. You know, Morrison, I think I would disagree. If you'd like to continue working here, I'd suggest you go out and buy a new shirt. Button every button on your vest. And, oh, Jim. Morrison, that's a newspaper. Find the coupons inside for um, shampoo, laundry detergent, give them a shot. And if you think you can perform those menial tasks, report back in a week. Okay, but what about the management position? We'll discuss it and get back with you. Yeah, my girlfriend's in here. She's not working out. I just think she's not working out. I just think it's fun. Now all I need is my raise from seven months ago. It should be illegal, but you can't outlaw ignorance. All I get here is a sort of a constant empty reassurance. Remind me later. Next paycheck. I'm on it. I'm busy. I swear all they do up here is eat. No, d don't lick them. Don't lick... That makes me sick. Makes me sick. Well, how'd it go? Oh, actually pretty good. Yeah, I told him I should be the staff supervisor. You're funny, Morrison. Why is that funny? You think you have what it takes? That's a lot of responsibility. Come on. All you guys do is sit up here with Rick all day long. Our job is to supervise you. Oh, yeah, and that's a really great job you guys are doing. You have no idea what goes on here. There's, do you realize that there's an ass-pinching epidemic going on among the staff members around here? I'm not aware of that happening. Yeah, well, I could fuck some girl in the parking lot. You wouldn't be aware of that either. That's it. You're suspended for I'm already week. fucking suspended, and I don't care. This is shit. I eat potato chips. I like tomatoes in my salad. about Andrea a lot. The three words total I've said to her were, hey, and see you. Thoughts 
The faint hope that I was able to leave a good enough impression for the supervisor position got me through the week. I was anxious to get back. When I got back, the managers refused any feedback on the status of the position. I swear I have no idea what I've done to this guy to make him hate me. Is it fresh? Oh, yeah, I just, I just popped it myself. Yeah, right. <clears throat> you bring it in bagged. I just popped it myself. I've seen you bring it out of that door in bags. What door? That door. That's a mop closet. Yeah. How much is a small soda? Five dollars. Five dollars? For soda? It's carbonated water and syrup. Yep. I'm not paying it. Okay, bye. That's how we make our money. From the concession stand. I don't know if you heard this or not, but uh, my grandma has cancer, and uh, I was supposed to see her this weekend, but Rivers uh, scheduled me for Friday night, so I was wondering if you might be able to work for me, maybe? Huh? Okay. Alright. A lot of your league, isn't she? Hey. Are you okay? No, leave me alone. I'm fine. No. No, you're not. Bobby broke up with me. Oh. <clears throat> I don't know what to do. Well, you'll have a new boyfriend next week, so it doesn't matter. I did things with him I've never done before. He just seemed so sweet. Now he's with my best friend, Patricia. Yeah, well, I told you not to trust that guy. <laughs> What's going on here? <clears throat> you know, there will, there will be other Robbies. No. You're just a very poor decision maker. You're horrible at making any kind of decision. But at some point, you'll probably get over that. It's so hard. It'll work out for you. You've got lots of potential. You're... Very accommodating. You clearly like to snuggle, which is pleasant. 
Um, <clears throat> totally, of course, yeah. So, I think it's gonna be just fine for you. Yeah. Do you want me to get you a soda? You want Coca Cola? Okay, I'll get you Coca Cola. Hey Rick, why don't you stop making A-OK -okay signs at her ass? Knock it off! I'm sorry, Adelaide, it's just a really nice ass. Um, you're safe for saying No, it's very nice. And uh, shouldn't just go to waste. I'm sure you could find something to do with it. I don't know. Yeah, why don't you stop touching her? She obviously doesn't want you to. Touch her again and I'm gonna kick your ass. What the hell is your problem, man? I'm talking about punching. Oh, ah! You guys Stop. Give up. No, I get off my arm! Are you done? No. Have you seen the I-19 forms? I-19 forms? Ah! I want you to know that that was very embarrassing. Wanting to physically harm your co-worker is a natural feeling most people have. But it can be dealt with in a healthy, non-violent manner. Like a strategically placed carpenter nail. Hey Morrison, uh... Sorry about your arm there. Oh, it'll be just fine. Okay. Hey, Adelaide. Going on with the harasser? Yeah, I don't have a car, so... Protect your neck. Thank you very much, ma'am. Enjoy the show. <clears throat> oh. I'm thirsty. Okay, well, we've got a variety of uh, warm teas and refreshing drinks oh. if you'd like to try a soda. Okay, yeah. Um, I get, uh, um, okay, I'm allergic to lemons and limes. Okay. Not separately, but together. All right. It makes so some kind of chemical reaction. I lime in then. You're allergic to lime. Better, better just give me cola. Okay. What size would you like, sir? Medium okay. size. Okay. Mm, medium soda. It's coming right up. Yes. Right. Morrison. No. He ordered a medium. That's what I'm getting. Sir, for just a quarter more, you can get a large. Seriously? Yeah. Oh. Um, here's a tip. That's a pretty good deal. You know? Well, we like you, that's why we got it. Oh. Here's your large soda. Thank you for watching movies. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. You've been helpful. The next pay period, I found this subtle note stapled to my paycheck. Jim takes it very personally that I don't like to con customers into spending more money.
Why are you cleaning in here? I couldn't say. Why do you work so hard? Nobody notices or gives a shit. Yeah, well, somebody's gotta do it. <clears throat> the managers don't check it. The whole bathroom smells like somebody took a brown shit on the floor. Well, they don't pay me $7 an hour to clean up shit. Did you say $7 an hour? What are you two doing in here? Cleaning. <laughs> yeah, alright. Did either of you guys find a wallet? Oh, you lost your wallet, sir? Can't say I found it. Maybe Morrison saw it. Morrison? <laughs> well, did they find it? Did you find the wallet, Morrison? No. You can't trust people these days. So what happens now? What if they found it and lied? Look at them. They don't have your wallet. I'm sorry. Even if you hate a fellow co-worker, there is a certain us-versus-them mentality that is hard to ignore. I've hated Rick since his first weekend. Why did I lie and protect him? What was wrong with me? Alright, uh, I could be wrong, but I think there's about 40 ohms on the meter. Hey, so, uh, Martin, what do you think about Adelaide? Uh, have you met Rick yet? No. But nobody here can seem to shut up about him. He, he's the funniest guy. Sure. Rick was the only employee I'd ever met who came with his own pre-arrival hype. Two days with the staff and he was already an instant celebrity. An ugly truth about the corporate world is that it's the same old popularity contest where merit is rarely a factor. Take her in your arms and yell at her. Oh shit, she looked at sitting around wasting the company's money. I cleaned everything already. Well, if you're having trouble finding things to do, then I can find you things to do. Andrew. Damn. She'll come around. Oh, that reminds me. I found a new staff supervisor. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And? And he should be here any minute now. Well, who is it? The notion was absurd, but for a second I bought it. There was no way Rick could be manager. The cancer must have finally gotten his grandma, and the funeral was today. This is what I told myself. Hey guys. 
Oh, okay. For a minute, I thought Rick was gonna. Smile, Ricky. Mom, no. Jim. This is my mom. Pleased to meet you. The fine young boy you raised here. Thank you. I wanted to take his picture on his first day as manager. What the fuck did she just say? I'm sorry. Just. I usually say fuck like that, but it just slipped out. Oh, that's all right. We always say fuck at our house, don't we, honey? Fucking right. Well, you got your picture. You can uh, go now. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm going to show Mr. Rivers a picture of you when you were 10 years old. Oh, let me see. See, so you're the manager now, Rick. Congratulations, man. That's awesome. Yeah, I really didn't want it at first, but then they threw in health and dental, and, you know, you need that. Here he is when he was in the bathtub. Mom! There's nothing to be ashamed of. You were a lovely young man. You're going to be late for your allergy shot. He's still a lovely young man. Oops, sorry. May I take a picture of you, Mr. Rivers? Uh, uh. A little memento. All right, Mom. You can, uh. Okay, he wants me to leave. Don't forget, the dinner's in the fridge. Put it in the microwave for a minute 30. Feed the dogs. Take out the laundry. I mean, take out the trash. Bring in the laundry. Take out the trash. Okay. Don't worry, honey. Don't let me confuse you. You do a great job. Bye, Mom. Okay. Let's get to it, shall we? Yeah, let's do this. Hey, Manager Jim, Manager Rick, if you see Manager Fisher, could you send her my way, please? Yeah, I'll do that. And, uh, hey, why don't you clean up the concession stand? Thanks. Morrison, before you get out, calm down and listen to it. <clears throat> yeah, I can't wait to hear this. Morrison. Rick's a decent enough guy, okay? I know you guys have your differences, but if you look at his file, he's qualified. Qualified to fuck girls in the parking lot. <laughs> Morrison, he doesn't do that anymore. Oh, come on, Fisher. But everybody else likes him but you. He's the funniest guy. Doesn't that tell you something? He's a huge fake. He can't even lace the projector. He'll learn. The staff really responds to him, and so do the customers. But he's got talent for leadership. <laughs> That's such bullshit. You're just pissed because you've been here longer and you didn't get offered the position. Fuck that. Fuck this place. This is so fucking backwards. Then quit. I shouldn't have to. You're not a victim. These people are your co-workers. If you don't like it, quit. job to keep the floors clean. Why aren't you doing your job? Don't. I told Morrison to clean that up. I'm standing pole. Martin, why don't you go upstairs and empty out the waste baskets in the women's cells? Yes, sir. Where's your room? Where's your room? Oh, I get it. 
You're mad because I'm manager now. Yeah, that's that's hilarious. We need to have a broom and butler with you at all times. I'm not your mother. You're not three. Damn. Oh, hey, Rick. Yeah, uh, Jim wanted me to get the extra seat parts for the cellar. See if you can get your keys for that. Uh, but. I'll be right back. Oh, Ricky. You're probably wondering why I'm stopped at the car. No, not really. We're in a parking spot. Well, yes. I didn't want to pull over on the highway to discuss this with you. Your father was never able to have this talk with you. Oh, God. I didn't want to do it in the house. I was afraid, you know, it'd bring up bad memories. And, um, I didn't want to do it somewhere public. Soon women will be calling you. Soon? Have you given my number out to people or something? No, you know I haven't done that. Well, I did talk to Mrs. Hemel, and she has a daughter. Oh, not her. Oh, my God. She's a very sweet girl. Ugly. And... Sweet means ugly. No. Well, she does look a little like Mrs. Hemel. Beneath the words and depictions, he seemed like a lonely, pathetic guy, kind of like me. It was a little disturbing. I kind of expected to see a bunch of shit written about me, but I wasn't mentioned at all. So this adversity I'd felt between him and I didn't exist. I kind of felt bad for taking it, but I needed some advice. This stuff is morbid. You know? <laughs> you think you know a guy. That's a picture of him when he pissed blood. Look at the stream. <laughs> if a zombie ran for president, it's like four pages long. It's like a short story. Oh my god. But if a zombie ran for president. Man, how long has he been doing this? Yeah, it's really, really thorough. That's a hilarious thing. It's extremely detailed. It's like a doodle. Yeah, yeah, the, the doodles. <laughs> oh, god. I wonder who that's supposed to be. Yeah, I'm not sure. Wearing well, a nun costume, no less. <laughs> Whoever it is has a very large beard. He's only 17. Yeah, that was that weird. I'm fucking new, man. Uh, yeah, there's some stuff about you. Something had to be done, but it wasn't clear to me at first. Then I came across a small blurb he wrote mocking corporate theaters. It was pretty accurate and funny, so we Xeroxed the small excerpt and made tiny flyers. It'd be good for management to read, or at least funny to watch them deal with. Especially Jim. Tape in the office, my friend. Uh, you're gonna need about 50% of these. We can thank Mr. Kinko for that. There we are. Two for the matinee right there. Sure, sure of course. Whoever's taking tickets that day. Gonna need a little more scotch. Oh, I need a, a pocket tape. 
you know, just feeling creative. Are you, as I am, a little bit scared that Jim's upstairs masturbating right now? <laughs> it's two in the morning. He won't. Oh God, he's upstairs masturbating. He's in his office. Just like, Again, this this is more about the aesthetics. I feel like the straws are a good move because uh, everybody needs straws. Uh, Mark, this is this is a very important one because uh, that's right about eye level for Jim. So as soon as he as soon as he walks out in the morning, he'll be able to he'll notice it initially. And, uh, ideally, everything will be made clear. Let's get one of these. Perhaps he'd finally believe what I'd been telling him all along. Mark had been a valuable ally and a hero of mine, but he was, ultimately, a loser with no future. After that, we sat in the empty auditorium and talked about girls, life, and other shit we knew nothing about. So, uh, what's with you and Andrea, man? What's the story? <laughs> What do you mean, what's up with us? Uh, maybe nothing of substance, but there was some eye contact today that I don't think could be called accidental. <laughs> oh man, that's sad. Eye contact. There was some eye contact. That's good. That's sad. Good. That's good. Felt, felt pretty glorious. Well, I, you know, I'm sorry. I don't know, I don't know how to approach her, you know? I don't know. Oh, you know what you could do? Could uh, start with something. Hmm, don't don't start too complicated. You know? Okay. Uh, try something like uh, hello. Okay. Um, my name is Morrison. Right. How do you do? Um, Good day. At the risk of being like writerly, that. I think my tongue would turn to lead in my mouth if I tried to approach her. Yeah, but man, you just gotta you just gotta go out there and go for it. You know, I mean, <clears throat> you're too busy thinking too hard about this and that. You just gotta acknowledge and subsequently act on your impulses. That's, you know, yes, that would be ideal, but I'm not, that's not the kind of dude I am, you know? I'm just not, I'm not professor aggressive. No, I don't, you know, I would, but it's not going to do any good. It's not going to make him recognize that he's like a predatory, <laughs> manipulative, abusive shithead, you know? There's... Yeah, that promotion, that was some... That was a boner, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a huge boner. I couldn't believe it a boner. I, you know, everybody here is just under his spell. That's ridiculous. Like, you remember that when I worked for his, his grandma who had cancer? Mm. His grandma, I did a little bit of research. She lives in uh, Tampa Bay. She runs eight <laughs> miles a day and eats pretty much nothing but oranges. Uh, she's a very <laughs> healthy woman. He actually went to see a Megadeth concert that evening. Oh, man, that's so sweet. Yeah, so I, I fell for it, too, you know? Oh man, he's just a 17 year old kid. You just gotta, you know. Yeah, he's 17, but that doesn't make him not a jerk, you know. I've never seen him, never seen him lift a finger to clean anything in this place. Yeah, but uh, aren't you the guy who cleans like the top of like the speakers and stuff? You do the you do the crap that not even a guy like Jim Rivers would ask us to do. Well, a the dust affects the acoustics. <laughs> You know, I'm All sorry. Right. And B, you know, I, it's just part of who I am. I'm just, I'm a, I'm a born scrubber. Yeah. It's a little embarrassing. <laughs> like more time spent in a urinal than I'm, than I'm proud of. But in, in the interest yeah. of self improvement, smoked a little bit less and drank a little bit less. You know, because I'm, I'm 21 years old and it's time for me to be virile, not like, destroying my body with illicit substances. <laughs> Okay, well, then what is it that you would like to do, Mark? What do you want to do? What is there to do? Okay, fair enough. What, <laughs> what would you like to end up doing in your life? Uh, preferably not going to jail. Okay, and, you know, I think that's a respectable goal to have. <laughs> but right. it would also be pretty sweet to end up on a beach somewhere drinking Mai Tais for a living. All right, all right, again, I, I, respect, I respect that. As a goal, you know, some days I feel like I still enjoy this job. 
Listen, man, trust me. You might like this theater, but there's no way in hell you enjoy this job. Fair enough. If you want to act like an asshole, tell him it like it is. <laughs> Mark was probably the only friend I had, although he might not have known that. First, I didn't understand it was the phone. Uh, I'm getting it. Hello? Jim, you don't usually call me. What's up? He used the same predictable words I imagine he used on his girlfriend. We're gonna have to let you go. <laughs> what? I'm fired. You fired me. Yeah. Did you see what he wrote about you? Oh, and that doesn't piss you off at all? No. Jerk. I don't believe this. I found the coffees, counted them, I faxed one of the DM. No! I don't think you're into it anymore, man. No, don't come up here. We'll, we'll, we'll mail you a check. Okay, all right, good, good. Right, right, don't come up here. Okay, bye. Don't come up here. I didn't get a very sympathetic response from Fisher, either. Corporate theaters, high point, how can I help you? No. What did you expect? Yeah, look, if you come up here, Jim will call the police. No, he's pissed. I can't do anything for you. All right, look, we'll talk later. I'm sorry, Morrison. All right, bye. All I wanted to do was make the high point presentable, to work hard for a stack of nickels and free film. All that hard work got me nothing. Not even a positive work reference.
So there I was, eating french fries on a ten minute break from earning my fare as a busboy dishwasher. I have not been welcomed back to the high point since being fired. I can imagine what they're doing with their lives. Hey. So you're, uh, you're working here now? No. Yep. So you didn't do any better, huh? Well, I haven't seen you in a long time. Yeah, how's the, how's the theater? I don't care. <laughs> Neither should you. So did you, did you quit? I'm not going in tonight. So, uh, yeah, I guess so. So what are you going to do? I think I'm going to uh, drive down to the ocean with my dog. <laughs> cool. Where are you going? Um, wherever the closest beach is. So you're just taking off? Yeah, why not? Well, that's awesome. I've never even been out of the Midwest before. I wish I could go. Well, you could come with me. Oh, I, I can't. I'm, I'm on break, so I gotta, I gotta be right back in a minute. Back to work. Morrison, you could come with me. I can't. Okay, well, um, I just, I guess I'll get going. Okay, um, have fun at the beach. Yeah, yeah, have fun here. <laughs> okay, Morris, see you later. Okay. My name is Morrison. I'm 21 years old. High school graduate. Here I am.
Is a fool.